About four months ago, I upgraded my 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro and my 2017 27-inch uh, i5 iMac to a refurbished 2021 M1 MacBook Pro 14-inch uh, model. And since then, a lot of you guys have been asking me about how is this device performing. And I wanted to give you an update on the 2021 M1 Pro MacBook Pro in 2024. Let's start with, of course, why I bought this device instead of buying the brand new M3. And the main reason for that is value for money. I bought this device refurbished from Apple for 2300 Aussie dollars, where a similarly specced M3 model would have cost me over 3300 or a thousand bucks more for an M3 Pro processor, the same 16 gigs of RAM and the same 512 SSD. So when I weighed up the value um, of the price versus performance and what I get, really I'm getting the exact same body and design, but I'm saving a thousand dollars. And when I look at the performance of it, I really wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the M1 Pro and the M3 Pro for the workloads that I do. Um, the great thing, of course, about buying a refurbished Apple device from Apple is that the, the device looks and feels brand new. You cannot tell it's been refurbished. And of course, you get the same manufacturer's warranty. In Australia, that means I have two years of warranty on this device. And of course, if you're buying it in countries like the US, you would still get that one year of manufacturer's warranty from Apple. So even though I'm buying a 2021 model, I still get warranty up until I bought it last year. I'd still get warranty up until 2025 or two years of coverage. But for me, it's not about comparing the 2021 M1 MacBook Pro to the M3 model, but it's more about where I came from. And I came from a 2017 uh, MacBook Pro 15 inch with the Intel processor. And of course, it is a massive jump when I was going from Intel to ARM. And that comes with a host of benefits, including way better battery life, unreal performance, and so much better heat management. The 2017 MacBook Pro would often get really, really hot when I'd be video editing, and I really couldn't keep it on my lap for extended periods of time. And I'd always have to have it plugged in. Otherwise, if it wasn't, it would get really slow. And of course, it would get really loud under heavy video editing. Now, when I'm using the MacBook Pro or the M1 Mac Pro, I don't notice any of these issues. And I do a lot of my editing now, even on battery power. And I don't even realize the difference between being plugged in to the charger or running on battery power. It is always super quiet, but even better than that, it's just super, super smooth for everything that I do. So going from the 2017 to the M1 MacBook Pro has been a massive jump in performance and just the usability of the device. And then of course, with that, you get, you truly do get that all day battery life. Uh, so this computer, I haven't really tested how long I use it for without charging it, but I probably charge it twice a week, which means if I use it every day for a couple of hours, I'm getting quite a few hours out of it. Whereas the 2017 Mac Pro, I'd plug that thing in every single night. Whereas this one here, I don't really have to worry about it. I usually just shut the lid and then I get back to it the next day. In terms of overall design, I it is a good looking machine. Of course, it is an Apple Pro product, uh, but and I appreciate the return of MagSafe. Uh, but I actually prefer the overall look of the 2017 MacBook Pro. It was that little bit thinner. It was a bit bigger of machine. It was a 15 opposed to a 14 inch. It didn't have the notch up the top. Um, but of course, if I was looking at picking one overall, uh, this is definitely the option to go for just because the other device was a bit bigger, a bit thinner, a bit lighter. But the additions of the M1 processor inside of here with the performance, the battery life, the lack of heat, uh, just outweigh the slightly thinner 2017 model. Um, overall, it is a good looking computer, but if I had to choose, if I could have the best of both worlds, I would have this design uh, or this processing power in the 2017 model with the one exception of this keyboard uh, opposed to the butterfly keyboard in the 2017 MacBook Pro with the um, the touch bar because the return of the function keys is really, really welcome as we've heard so many times from other reviewers. But of course, the standout feature of my 2021 MacBook Pro M1 has to be the value of the performance versus the price that I paid. Like I said at the start of this video, I bought this because if I looked at everything I was getting for it, the value of this outweighs buying a brand new computer. It was also a massive upgrade over my 2017 inch model. This device right now is essentially three years old from when it was manufactured. But when you consider in how it stacks up to my previous device, it is a huge upgrade. And when I compare it to what's on the market today, including the M3s, it isn't that much of a downgrade. So for saving over a thousand dollars and getting all the performance uh, that I want, this device is honestly unreal value in my opinion, because what I use it for is mainly video editing 
and it just it flies with all the video editing that I do do. It gives me the freedom and the flexibility to do my video editing on the go without worrying about heat, without worrying about battery life performance. Uh, and of course, it still has the same design as the new M3 models, uh, but I got it for a fraction of the price. It comes with full warranty because I bought it from the Apple Refurbish website. And for that, I think the M1 Pro MacBook Pro is really, really good value for money. Of course, if you are looking at upgrading your computer to a refurbished M1 MacBook Pro like this one, one thing to note is that they are not always readily available on the Apple website. You have to go and you have to refresh every week, every couple of weeks to see if you do get these on the Apple website. Uh, I had to wait quite a few weeks for this one to pop up. And when it did, I hit that buy button straight away. So I missed out on one a few weeks previously. Uh, so one tip I would recommend is that if you go on the website wanting to buy one right now and it's not there, if you can wait a few weeks and then see if it does pop up. Uh, and of course, if you do have the, the money and you want to buy the latest and the greatest, don't even worry about that. Go get yourself an M3 because they will be like this, but better, or at least on paper. Um, but of course, for me, I'd always go for the value and finding the tools that does the right job without spending too, too much money. Overall, I'm extremely happy with this device because it's been a huge upgrade from my 2017 inch model. There's really nothing negative I can say about it. Except for maybe if I was nitpicking, it would be the notch up the top. Sometimes you do you, you do realize that it's there, but most of the time it just fades into the bra uh, background when you're when you're working on your computer. Um, so would I recommend the 2021 M1 MacBook Pro in 2024? Definitely, you betcha I would. There's a reason Apple still has these for sale on their website. There's a reason that a lot of big reviewers haven't upgraded to the M3 uh, MacBook Pro like Mark is uh, Brownlee, but he's using the M1 Mac 16 inch uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, but of course, if you're not a massive uh, video editor like Mark is, and you're doing more light things like I am, the M1 MacBook Pro is really, really good value for money. Uh, and I would definitely highly recommend it. Of course, I hope you guys like this video. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And of course, if you like it, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.